Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Today's episode I have really been marinating on for a while because it's something that I think at some point as adults we all recognize that our friend groups evolve and the enormous amount of friends that we thought we had, we don't or we still do, but that's shifting, we're changing ourselves the types of friend that we need also evolve. And so I want to share with you the three types of friends in our life that I've been able to boil it down to. But before I do, obviously you can hear I'm a little stuffy. We're sick again over here in the Palomino house. My son started daycare. And of course they tell you, get ready. You're all going to get sick. And I was like, I know, I, I, you know, I get it. Well, I didn't think the very first week it would happen. So here we are a week after the first week and we're starting to get better. What else is new in our lives? We went to the pumpkin patch over the weekend, did our best to get ourselves out of the house, although we were still getting over a little bit of a cold and it was really humid. So like the thought of like a fall pumpkin patch, you know, it was just fall in Florida is not the same. <laughs> I'm sure you can relate if you live in a similar area or similar climate where it's just humid. The the weather doesn't really follow the seasons if you catch my drift, but we're trying over here. We're trying. This morning it was actually 70 <clears throat> when I took him to school and it was so nice and refreshing to drink hot coffee with the cooler weather. Oh, there's nothing better in this time of year than that. And so... It's also interesting that I'm recording on a Monday because back when I was in corporate, I just remember that Mondays were my worst day of the week. It was so hard to like get with it, get excited, be <clears throat> like have something I'm looking forward to. It was just, it was just hard. It was a hard day of the week. And what's so interesting is that I thought when I transitioned into starting the podcast that, oh no, I don't want to record on Mondays because that's like a hard day for me. Like I associated Mondays being hard. And now I'm excited to start my week and I'm excited. And with that excitement, like I want to record on Mondays now. It's so interesting. It's so strange, but I think, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the interesting part is that it's not necessarily like, oh, this this the, this particular day is not good for me. It's well, what am I? What's happening in my life that this day is not working for me anymore? And clearly, me shifting my work environment had everything to do with how I was feeling on those days of the week. So I found that to be super fascinating because. I did not think I would be recording on Mondays and here we are. I'm super excited and I'm super grateful to come talk to you and share with you more about how I have boiled down this particular area of my life. Friendship is so crucial to each of our lives. If you're like me, you have to have your girl time multiple times a week, if not at least once, okay? And if I go too long without girl time, I start to feel like it has an impact on me where I just feel like something's missing, like that element of my life where I can just chit chat with the girlfriend or just catch up or bounce ideas or just talk about life or whatever's going on. And just that outlet, that community, that village, that support system, we all need it. We all crave it. So that's how we're designed. And so it occurred to me earlier on in the year that our friendships boil down into three categories. And it occurred to me when I was going through some hurdles and hiccups, some of my friends that I was super close to, super aligned with, and then all of a sudden the season shifted where it just, the relationship just didn't feel the same. And it happened with a couple of different relationships across the board. And now it's like, okay, so what does this mean? Oh my gosh, what does this mean? You know, and how do I not hurt that person um, during the process? And what it occurred to me was that we, as we evolve, 
Okay. Um, some of our friends will evolve with us and some won't depending on their journey and their timeline and where they're at in life and what they're comfortable with or what they're willing to be uncomfortable with to grow and get through that season, right? And then there's things that you're not going to be okay with or that you're just going to kind of look past and not say anything, right? So it's a two-way street. What kind of friend are you and what kind of friend are you looking for or need? And so it took some time to really come to this because I had to take inventory of the friends in my life. And I used to do this all the time back in the day. Um, I would sit with myself in my quiet time and I would journal and I would write out who were the top five people I was spending most of my time with. Who were the top five friends I, I invest my time in? Who were the top five people I'm continuously surrounding myself with on a weekly, monthly basis. Who are those people? Because what happens is we go about our lives not really thinking about who we're spending our time with. Is it our neighbors? Is it our family? Is it my my kids' parents at the school that we're just getting together, you know, frequently because of the soccer games or the play dates or, you know, like whatever it is. Is it the coworkers? Like, who is it that you are spending your time with? And once I got clarity on that, I was able to recognize, oh my gosh, this is why I'm either craving a certain element in my life because I'm not receiving it because these people bring this to me. So let me tell you what I did. I broke down, number one, Okay, if you want to save this episode so you can go back and replay it and do this exercise, or if you have a pen and paper handy, or even write it down in your phone and your notes, I would in one column write down my top five people I would spend the most time with. Okay, maybe it's the top 10 people, maybe you're a su- super social butterfly, um, but top five. Then I would write down what are their qualities and what are they contributing to my life? So, like their qualities. And then after that, what are they contributing to my life? So three columns. And that type of clarity was able to help me decipher, okay, do I want to continue investing as much time? Do I want to spend more time? How can I make these relationships even more beneficial, more valuable to me, more beneficial to me? And vice versa, what type of friend am I? What do I believe my key qualities are? And how do I bring that into those relationships with those top five people? Like what value do I bring into their life that would make them want to have access and more access to me? So it is a teeter-totter in what is the, the energy exchange taking place? What value are we bringing to each other? Is it helping us move the needle forward in, you know, certain elements of our life, in our motherhood journey, in our life journey, in our business journey, in our health journey? Like, what are the factors that are that are happening in certain friendships? And it could be multiple, it could be singular. Um, but that clarity was able to bring forth a connection and, and an actionable step into, okay, I know what to do here. When there's confusion and those lines are kind of gray, you're not even really thinking about it. It it just creates a bit more chaos, especially when the seasons shift and the tides change and you're not really sure how to move through because you don't really know what you need because you haven't gotten gotten to that point of clarity on where you've shifted and what you now need within your support system that maybe it's there, maybe it's not there. Like maybe it's talking to that friend who has that quality, but is not contributing that quality into the friendship because you haven't identified, Hey, I would really love to like dive more in this with you or just start talking more about it. And that will naturally come out of them. Knowing what that list is gives you the clarity on what you're missing and what you need more of. So from there, here are the three categories, okay? Um, you have people in your life that no matter what are going to be inspired by you. They're going to be looking up to you. They're going to be 
motivated by you. Why? Because you're a couple of steps ahead of them, or you're doing things that they want to do, or you're just that person that inspires their growth. And that is incredible. But what you must be careful of is those people, which are super crucial to have because it holds you accountable, right? There is there is an, an energy exchange that holds you accountable because you you're, you know someone's watching you, right? It's like your kids. Your kids, you are their inspiration and you want to hold yourself accountable to be a good role model for them. Okay, same principle here. However, um, with those types of friends, you can't have an expectation of maybe feeling inspired by them just because they are inspired by you and hold this like weight over them because they're not doing the same thing. Maybe this relationship is 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 adding more to their life due to where you are currently in your life than it is this person adding as much value into yours. So the first type of friend is people that are inspired by you, okay? People that look up to you, which holds you accountable, okay? The second type is in reverse. Those that you look up to, that you are motivated by, that you are inspired by, that you aspire to be. They are your role model. They keep you looking forward and ahead and hungry and humble and grounded because you know that there's that much not many more steps ahead of you that you can grow into and that you can appreciate where you are right now and know that people are looking up to you. It's just that it's a healthy dynamic, right? And then you have those that are your peers that are growing with you. You do one, they do one. You have a win, they have a win. Constantly supporting each other's growth every step of the way. They are your running mate. You know, I have so many friends that we're currently in this stage of our lives where we're getting married, having babies, like we're growing together in this department of life. We're peers amongst each other. We're evolving in our businesses. You're going to notice you will have friends that will fall into each of these three buckets and some overlap or encompass all three because some friends will inspire you while they're your peers and maybe a little ahead of you. And the key is to recognize where can I add value in this person's life and what kind of value are they bringing to me? And it relinquishes the expectation of what they're not doing or what they're not bringing into your life. Then you have other people who are adding the value that you desire. And those are likely your peers or those that you're, you know, motivated by. And so it just gives you a framework to take pressure off of people in your life to show up in any which way other than who they are as they are in the season they're in and be curious to ask them, hey, you know, is there any type of support that I could give you at this point in your life right now? And just being honest, the the more transparent you can be, the better because it allows people to be human and recognize that we're all going through different seasons and changes in our lives. And that support follows that season. At the end of the day, what you don't want is to feel drained by certain friendships and not recognize what is the value there. So I've had so many of these encounters where I would sit back and ask myself, what value does this person bring in my life? Like, why am I friends with this person? What value do they bring? And there were a couple of times that I couldn't, I couldn't put to words what the value was. I was just friends just because we've all been there, right? Because we've been friends since college or since high school, or I've known them since I was little or like early childhood, or they're a family friend. Whatever the scenario looks like, sometimes we weigh the amount of time we've known somebody over the actual value that they're bringing into our life. And that's not necessarily going to help you. It's just going to keep you stuck because you're not growing. The friendship isn't intentional. Now, there are plenty of friendships that are long-term that are intentional, but it's a matter of you becoming aware of that in order to bring that into the relationship. 
allows you to step out of that victim mentality and to take control over your portion on what you're co-creating on what it is that you're seeking of this relationship, of this friendship, and getting clear on that with yourself. If you can identify that someone's draining you, but yet you're inspiring to them, if you can remove yourself a little bit from investing a lot of your time and energy where you know you're not really going to get anything in exchange because that person at this time is receiving more from you than you're receiving from them. You can invest that energy elsewhere while still maintaining that friendship from afar. They're still going to be receiving the same benefits because you are who you are. You can empower yourself to know what you need without holding it against anybody. And that's the best part about this exercise and coming to the awareness of what types of friends you have in your life because it just it takes the pressure off and I keep going back to that it just makes it it makes the relationships flow in your life a lot easier without having an expectation over them or any disappointment or pressure it just allows people to be who they are and and in this season right um, and so if you're growing at a different rate and your other friends in your life aren't, that's okay. They don't have to, but you can recognize what, how is the value exchange shifting? What do they need? What do I need? If they need that inspiration from you, great. You're, you are who you are, but if you need a bit more motivation in your life, someone that you're inspired by, who can that be for you? Where can you go find that person? So that's the inventory. That's the second part, right? Once you've taken that inventory on who those types of people are in your life and what those dynamics mean to you and how you can now relinquish that pressure or say, oh my gosh, I get it now. That's why this person is this way to me. Or now I understand why I need to be limiting my energy because I'm not getting anything in return. They're strictly receiving it from me, which is good. I know it's helping them, but yeah. So that's what you can do about it. You can still send love, but recognize where you need to limit that exchange so you can take that energy and put it elsewhere reinvest it, repurpose it. You want to repurpose your energy because you only have so much energy in a day. Then from there, you can recognize what's missing. Do I actually have that running mate? Have I outgrown all my friends and now they're, everyone just looks up to me. I don't have no one to look up to or hold me accountable or grow with or like have that win with in life. Where can you go find that person? Where can you start opening up yourself to making space for new friendships. I recall when I took a step back from friends in my life at a time where I was majorly transitioning. Why? Because I wanted to create some space. I knew that if I wanted to become and evolve and grow beyond that I, which I was, I needed friends that matched that frequency. And so I took a step back from my, my friendships. I just went on pause. Okay. I'm a bit of a hermit like that sometimes. And I asked the universe, I spoke it out loud. I want friendships that match me and my frequency or higher. And seriously, within the next two to three months, I started meeting four to five different women that were all super high vibrational high frequency that each brought a new and fresh element into my life that I never had before. And it was so amazing. I was like, what in the world is happening right now? Like, this is so cool. But it came down to me, A, creating the space, B, getting clear on what I wanted, and then being patient for it. And when it arrived, it was incredible. So now I flip it back onto you. Where is it that you can seek clarity in your life to recognize what is missing in your friendships that will help you grow beyond? Because we are who we surround ourselves with. And if we don't like who we are, number one, we're not aware of what we need and what we're lacking. And then how much of our own energy are we investing? 
in, into something without expectation or pressure, okay? Because that's where disappointment comes in and then victim comes in because the the expectation of, oh, I'm showing up this way and they have to then do this and all that. No, no, no. Chuck that out of your mind into the garbage. Dumpster will be picking it up tomorrow and then you could say, bye-bye, no more, okay? Um, you want to come from a place of abundance and knowing that everyone is going to be receiving something from you that comes into your life, but you also have to recognize what is this person bringing into your life and being okay with it just being this. And if it's more, great, but you can't expect everything from one person or everything from two people. It's just not going to happen that way. And so you can empower yourself to take that inventory, evaluate the friendships in your life, their influence, their value, and their contribution. Who are your peers? Who are your running mates? Who are those that you are inspired by that are ahead of you? Who are those that look up to you? And that to me is one of the ways to feel so fulfilled is to know that there's no pressure anymore. There's absolutely no pressure. And then it's also being patient to recognize when those new friendships come into play. It honestly kind of feels giddy because now like you're aware of it. You're like, oh my gosh, this is what this friendship is. Oh, yay, fun. And who you are in someone else's life. What kind of value do you bring into that person's life? Where do you fit in the dynamic? Can you see it? Can you recognize it where you fit? Are you the person that's inspiring or motivating them? Are you the person that's there, their peer? What are you bringing into their life and vice versa? I found this to be so transformational in my friendships. It allowed me to become a better friend because perhaps you're holding an expectation over one of your friends because they're not showing up for you in a certain way. Well, maybe that friend doesn't have the capacity to. And I hope that this inspires you to look at your friendships from a new perspective, from a perspective of how can I add value where this person is at in their life right now? How can I create more intention in my relationships? How can I evolve my community to support myself with where I'm at today and where I'm going tomorrow? Do you even know where you're going tomorrow? Do you even know the season of your life that you're in right now? What do you want to be next year from now? What are your goals? Because your friends will, will meet that vibration whether or not you know. Like you're going to get what like where you are right now, consciously or unconsciously. So wouldn't it be better if we were conscious about it so we could actually have a bit more control and steering the direction consciously, knowingly, I would. The other aspect of this is I'll never forget growing up, and I'm sure you have come across this saying as well from a family member or a friend or just life in general, that you are who you surround yourself with. My grandma would always tell me growing up, show me your friends and I will show you who you are. I'm like eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old, and so on. And all the time she would tell me this and like, I understood it. And then I would talk about it when I was a teenager and I was speaking to youth groups and youth programs. Show me your friends. I'll show you who you are. Show me your friends and I will show you your future. And as true as that is, as we're young, like adolescents, teenagers going through high school, like who you hang around is who you become, as that is true and applicable then, it is applicable now as an adult. If you hang around with people who don't have goals, who are just like aimlessly going through life, you're probably not going to be as motivated. You're probably not going to make the best choices for yourself. You're probably not going to be thinking bigger or thinking long-term or expanding your mind. You're going to be probably a bit more singular. What's happening today or what's happening this weekend? And that's as far as you're ever going to go. But once you start to just think bigger and you support yourself with people who also think bigger, imagine how much farther you're going to see. Imagine how much more expanded your mindset is going to become. And you're going to start to dream, create, 
innovate, think. Your vision for your life is going to expand because you're going to think about things that are going to become possible. It's so important who we spend our time and our energy with and who we're receiving visions from and influence from and opinions from. You never want to take advice from somebody that you wouldn't be willing to trade places with. That is the power that people have in our life because we 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 take advice from people that are our friends. We we love them. We trust them. They're in our lives. However, would you trade places with them in that area of their life that they're sharing their opinion on? And if you wouldn't, take it with a grain of salt. And if you would, lean into it. Ask some more questions. Think about where you're lacking in that department. Ask for accountability. Talk a little bit more about it. But if there's a certain area that someone is commenting on that they're that, that you would not want to trade places with them with, do yourself the favor, release the expectation, let it go with a grain of salt, take it for what it is, but don't don't give it too much energy. And so that's the power of clarity in knowing where does someone fit in your life? Where does someone add the contribution that's helping you grow? And maybe it's starting with recognizing what are what is my season of life right now? What am I looking for my friendships? What do I need from my friendships? I just had one of my best friends come and stay with me for the weekend and I needed that. It was so needed. Like I had yet to have like true quality girl time since we moved a couple months ago and I was craving it and she came and we just had a really great time. And this is a friend who is a peer in my life, somebody who inspires me, who I'm also motivated by. Like she's one of those that fits all the the categories and there's going to be people like that that you're going to have. So I urge you, re-listen to this if you need to take down the notes, whether it's pen and paper or in your phone, make the list of your top five friends or the top 10 people, your social butterfly, okay? Who are they? What are their qualities? What are they contributing to your life? And then you could also take it a step further to what category do they go in? Are they inspired by you? Are they your peer? Are you motivated by them? Or or do you look up to them? Okay. You are going to feel so much lighter and you're going to show up to these friendships more on fire with more enthusiasm and more gratitude because when you have that clarity you just know it's going to fill your heart with so much love and so much warmth and you're going to say just you're just going to feel so good like literally i i feel so good that now when i went through this i relinquished so much expectation and all that like weird feeling around certain friendships and i was like no like this feels good now so i hope that helps you in your friendships i hope that gives you the clarity that you need i hope it gives you the opportunity to sit with yourself and and not feel bad either for staying in a friendship for too long that isn't actually serving you like you can't get upset at yourself for something you didn't know Okay, maybe you're pretending not to know. Still don't get upset at yourself. Just give yourself that grace to say, you know what? Yes, I was pretending like I didn't know, but I stayed because I was comfortable. I stayed because I I wanted that person to fill the spot. I didn't know where to go look for friends or I didn't want to not have a friend in my life and wait for that other girlfriend to come in. Give yourself that permission slip. Just do And you're going to feel so much better once you recognize that clarity and you give yourself that space. It was hard. It took like two or three months for me to really um, cultivate those new friendships after I got intentional about it. Okay. It was a lot longer until I became intentional. So the quicker you become intentional, the faster it'll happen. Um, The longer you just dilly dally and that like unconscious thing that we talked about earlier, the longer it'll take. So the more intentional you need to become, the more things will come to you that you want. I'm sending you so much love today. Share this with a girlfriend that needs to hear this. That's like going through it right now with her friendships 
that you think she would find so much value, so much clarity, and she would thank you endlessly for sending her this, knowing that it would help her get through this season, this time in her life. You guys, I can't wait to chat with you more next week. And until next time, elevate your life by seeking the clarity that you need.